a little disclaimer just to throw out there before we get into these videos is everything that I'm going to talk about in this video series is specifically to my rebuild kits. If you're getting your parts uh, from other places, the information that I'm giving you uh, may not correlate. And so it is very important that this is specific to my recipe using the rebuild kits that I sell. If you guys are interested in those rebuild kits, you can check them out at the website here below, www.getloganbuilt.com. All right, enough talking, let's jump into this stuff. Welcome back to step two of our 48 DIY teardown. Today we are going to dive into the specific internal components and we're going to get all of these torn down and talk about how to properly clean them so we can start our reassembly process. So the first thing that we're going to jump into here is tearing down the front pump. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get the old o-ring off so that way you don't forget it. If you have a parts washer, it doesn't go flying off into your parts washer because when it heats up, it expands and it'll come off. You're going to want to save whatever thrust washer is on your front pump. I can see that somebody has had, uh, in my opinion, the wrong thrust washer in that. So that might mean that uh, we have some excessive in play that we're going to have to deal with at the end of this. But it's really hard telling when you get into a core that someone has already been into. These are the pump ceiling rings. You're going to, want to take these off, throw them in the garbage. Kit comes with new ones of these. Pretty much any of these uh, ceiling rings or O-rings, you can just take them off, throw them in the garbage because we're going to replace all this stuff. And now we need to take the stator support out of the pump. And we do that with these six half inch bolts. Now, depending on who worked on these, these can also be really tight. Uh, they're not supposed to be extremely tight because they are just a 5 16 bolt, but sometimes it seems like these get really tight. So, you might have to use your friend Mr. Hammer again. You can use an impact on this stuff, but I am not, uh, not super big on impacting stuff on transmissions. It's fine for teardown purposes, but I really like to be able to feel the bolt uh, just to make sure that I don't cause any more damage than what might already be there. Sometimes, depending on the way that the uh, stator support is made, they're all cast a little bit different. Uh, you won't be able to use a half inch, or I'm sorry, a 3 8 drive half inch. Uh, you'll have to use a quarter inch half inch to get a thinner wall socket because sometimes the socket won't fit uh, between the casting and the bolt head. Wow. Somebody wanted some of these not to go anywhere and other ones were just normally tight. And once you remove all the bolts, you can just push down on the stator support, and now the stator support comes out. Uh, you're going to want to take this ceiling ring, this converter ceiling ring, and uh, you're going to throw it away. We don't run these on any of the DIY kit stuff. Now, one thing I always do as soon as I pull these apart is I look for excessive wear from the pump gears on the face of the stator support here. I'll check it and make sure that I can't catch my nail on anything. Uh, this one here looks to be really good. If you get into a situation where that is tore up, usually the gears are tore up as well on the face of them, and that is not good. Uh, if you put it back together like that, you will have a severe deficiency in line pressure, and you will burn the transmission up again. So if you do have any sort of scarring on the gear side, the stator support side, or even the face inside the pump here, uh, you need to replace all of it or whatever is scarred because it will create problems if you don't. So now that we have the pump pretty much all the way tore down, uh, this one has a 
really nice newer bushing in it. Um, really, you know, if you have a good pump bushing, a lot of times you can leave it. I never do. I take the extra five minutes and put a new bushing in it, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, but technically, if your bushing is in good shape, no reason to go and change it unless you're like me and you just always want to. So, easiest way to do that is you first have to remove this uh, front seal. By looking at this, I'm a guessing that this uh, seal has never been off. Uh, somebody probably just put a bushing in and left the front seal in. Uh, this particular color seal isn't normally found in most of the kits, but I could be wrong. Somebody might have changed this before, but I'll know as soon as I start to take it off because the factory seals, when they get in there, they are so tight and so hard to get out. Usually you've got to take a screwdriver and run around the outside of here and bust this all loose before you can come in the inside and push it out that way. As I suspected, that thing has probably never been out of there before, so I'm gonna have to run around the outside, get it broke loose before I can go hammer it out the bottom. So now that I've got the end of it broke loose there, should be able to drive it out now. Ta -da! So now we need to drive the pump bushing out. What I like to use for this is a 36 millimeter socket. A 36 millimeter socket is the perfect size to drive the pump bushings in and out. Now, you're going to want to put the pump up on something because you don't want to break off the breather here. Uh, in my case, I slide it over here to the edge of the table and then I can drive this out. So now that I have driven this old bushing out, this bushing can go in the garbage. And then now this pump is ready to go in the parts washer. So I'm gonna set this pump, the gears, and the stator support to the side. One thing I did not mention, but I always check it every time before I go washing this, is I check the tolerance of the gears. To measure this, you are going to put it like that, uh, where it's you know tip to tip, center on that lug and then center it all the way down to the bottom and then you can use a feeler gauge to put in here a really good set of pump gears is like one thousandths of uh, anything between two thousandths and seven thousandths here is within spec but this is a really good set of pump gears because i could barely even get a one thousandths uh, feeler gauge in that so this pump will work very very well the other thing to check with that is when you put the center, the outer ring gear in the center here is the side to side slop. Um, this is not nearly as crucial as this measurement, the tip to tip, but this is important because if you accidentally put a 47 gear in a 48 pump body, you'll have uh, a bunch of wiggle room and that's not good. That won't make as much line pressure. One thing else I always check before I stick it in the washer is I want to make sure that the center tube inside of the stator support hasn't spun. Uh, there's a hole in here that you want to make sure that you can be able to get your pick in and your pick should be able to go inside the hole. If you can't get your pick in the hole, then that means that this tube is spun. And when this tube spins, it blocks off converter release and it makes it feel like it's uh, dragging the lockup clutch or if it is a lockup like this, it will actually drag the lockup clutch and then you get to pull all this back out and redo it. So always make sure that you can get your pick inside of that hole right there. All right, so now we've got the pump all tore down. We will tear down the input shaft and the forward clutch. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to any of this stuff. I'm just working from the pump to the back. So we are going to remove our thrust washer 
And so it looks like they had these thrust washers backwards. Uh, the thicker one I like to run in the pump and the thinner one I like to run between here, which I'll get into why when we get back into the reassembly process. But I'm gonna take that off. Uh, really you don't need to spend any time taking the seals off on these if it's a stock input shaft like this, because you know where this is gonna go in the garbage. Now that's assuming that you have a uh, entry level 2.0 or a you know 600 horsepower build or an 800 horsepower build. If you're doing an entry level build, then and you're running the stock input shaft, uh, then obviously you don't want to throw this in the garbage and you'll want to take those seals off. But because this is a 600 horsepower build, we don't have to worry about that. So now to get the forward clutches out, you're going to remove this here snap ring. This is where the picks come in nice and handy, but you can use a flathead screwdriver. Set that off to the side because good chance you'll reuse it. And then now, your forward clutches slide out. You'll need the reaction plate here. As you can see, it's a stepped looking deal. You want to save that. All the clutches can go in the garbage, and then you'll just want to save the reaction plate on the top. Now, we need to get the Belleville spring out. Um, you are going to replace this Belleville spring with the Garen Belleville spring provided, which is very important because when you increase the line pressure on a 47-48, this Belleville spring has to work harder. You're hitting it harder with the piston because you have more pressure behind it, and the stock Belleville springs over time can flatten out and fail and burn up the forward clutches and then you have no movement you're stuck on the side of the road. So the gearing ones are 50% thicker, they use a different metal spacer here and it helps protect against that. So to remove that, stick your pick in here, pop out your snap ring and you'll notice that this is a wavy snap ring with uh, a whole lot of wave to it. Make sure you save that and make sure that goes back in here because that's also very important. So now to get this out, just push down on your input shaft there. It'll pull the Belleville spring up out of it. Forward clutch hub comes off and then this stock Belleville spring, you already know, goes in the garbage. Now we're gonna take the apply piston out of the input shaft. No tricks here. Just grab the center of it here with your fingers, pull it out, now it's out. And then in my application, because this is a 600 horsepower build, we're throwing this in the garbage. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the seals off. Uh, we're never ever gonna reuse old seals. We're always going to change those out while we're in here. And if you have a 47 RH transmission that you're doing this kit to with the gear in Belleville spring, you are going to need to replace your factory piston with a later style piston. Uh, the later style pistons are 780 thousandths thick. Your RH piston is gonna be 840, and that's too thick to run with the gear in Belleville spring. So make sure you have a 780 piston. So now that we have the forward stuff completely tore down, we can set that off to the side and get into the planetary setup. Now on the front planetaries here, this is where we're gonna need uh, a new tool. We're gonna need some snap ring pliers that look like this to where you can access a uh, snap ring with the two holes in it. Uh, these are a snap-on setup that I have, uh, but there's plenty of different style ones that are out there. Uh, I will admit that the parts store stuff is hard to find. It's usually pretty crappy for this, so uh, this might be the one area where you want to invest in some decent snap ring pliers. And man, you can always use these things for so many different applications. So first thing that we need to do here is we need to remove that snap ring and that is going to spread outward. So I need to switch this over. So that way, when I do that, it spreads outwards. And then we will remove the yeah, snap ring. Okay, now this comes apart extremely simple. The forward planetary, front planetary, just comes off of it like that. Let's set that off to the side for now. Uh, you're gonna get an array of thrust washers that come apart here. <laughs> Your sun shell comes off, and then your low planetary, and then now your intermediate shaft. So if it's your first time ever doing one of these, I recommend uh, paying attention to how 
these thrush washers come on and off of here because uh, it will make your life a little easier but we go over it during the reassembly process. So first thing I'll check on the sun shell is I'm checking this amount of play here. Uh, there's not an exact measurement for it but you don't want to have a bunch of play in this inner sun gear and the sun shell. Uh, you, you can know if it's excessive. If you grab a hold of it and it's ting, 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 then you need to uh, replace the sun shell, probably replace the sun gear as well. This one, that's nice and normal. That's good and tight. Uh, that'll work just fine. The rear planetary here, you can see this thrust washer. You're going to get all new thrust washers for your kit. Just, uh, you know, pay attention to how it goes together because that's exactly how it needs to go back together. Not much to those. Same on the front here. Not much to those. And when I'm taking these thrust washers apart, I'm looking at how they're wearing and I'm looking for anything uh, super out of the normal. If these things are really ate up, especially the front one, on a 48RE, the helical cut planetary gear will really try to shove into the outside of this thrust washer. And so the higher up you go in horsepower, the harder it is on this. Um, but if, if this is tore up really bad or if some of the other ones are tore up really bad. I'm looking for uh, some sort of lube issue or you know it could be just bad gear train in play uh, wasn't set up correctly but a lot of times with transmissions if you see something scary you need to pay attention to it because there might be something causing that scariness. And then uh, make sure you save this plastic washer. This is going to go back on the outside of that like that so we don't want to lose that. So now that we have all that tore down, we can set that off to the side. It's ready to go in the washer. All right, so the next thing we're gonna tear into is this direct drum. And to get the clutches out of the direct drum, just like the forward drum, there is a snap ring here. Now this is a waved snap ring in stock form. You're never gonna to wanna to use that waved snap ring. You're going to want to use one of the flat snap rings. That wave snap ring is going to give you extra clearance in the clutch clearance and so if you set the clutch up properly it's actually going to be uh, too loose of a clutch clearance. You're going to have too much clearance if you're on the wavy ring that's why you need to run the flat snap ring. And then you're going to save just the reaction plate from this and pretty much just turn that over to get all your clutches out and you're going to throw all these clutches and steels away because we're replacing all this with what comes in the kit. So, when you get this off, you want to look at your reaction plates. Um, a little bit of hot spotting is okay. We, could, we can take a scuff pad, we can take some sandpaper, and we can clean that up. But if this thing is torched really bad, if it's discolored, or if it's got a bunch of hot spots in it, um, and you, know, you can't reuse it, flip it over, because the other side has hot spots or it's discolored, then you're going to want to order one of these as well. So now... We need to press this drum apart. We need to push down on this retainer and we need to take a pair of snap ring pliers and pop loose of this snap ring. So to do this, this is where we get into you guys needing a press. Uh, you're gonna need a press of some sort and then you don't need a fancy tool for this. Uh, I'll show you guys how to easily make a tool out of some exhaust pipe. So let me take this over to the press and show you guys all that. All right, so we've got the drum setting over here on the press. Now we need a tool to press this off. This is just a four inch piece of nothing special, aluminized exhaust piping that you can see that I've cut a window in that's approximately you know two inches by three inches. And basically what I do with this is I put it over the retainer like so. And then now I can put a flat piece of plate here on the top side. And now I can press this apart and be able to access this. I actually like these better than the old three jaw anyways because uh, on a full manual where you put more return springs in it, it puts more pressure on this retainer and that sheet metal retainer is thin and if you just have an old three jaw it can actually crush it and that's not good. So this little setup here works really well and it's cheap and anybody can put one of these tools together. So I like to just center it up the best that I can and then make sure my hydraulic jack here is tight and then we'll run this down so we can press it out. All 
All right, you don't need to go a whole lot. You just need to get it down enough where you can get to the snap ring. Get your snap ring pliers in there, pop that out. And then I made this window wide enough to where I can just remove that to get it out of the way. So I don't have to worry about it getting hung up in the snap ring groove. Of course, you are gonna to wanna to save that because we're gonna to need to reuse it. Now this part of this is a little bit important. Uh, you need to make sure that as you raise the jack back up, the press, that this retainer doesn't get caught in the snap ring groove because if it does, it'll bend it. So that's where I also like the tool that I've made here is because I can hold on to it. I can let the jack up nice and slow. And then I can make sure that it gets past that retainer gets past that snapper and groove like it did there and now we're good so now we can take this all off and the retainer is nice and square it didn't get tore up and now we can go back to the bench finish taking this apart all right so now we are going to pull the nine springs out of this and set these off to the side. And you'll notice how it's three, skip two, three, skip two. That's important. You wanna make sure that these are equally spread. Otherwise the apply piston won't apply equally and that's gonna cause premature direct clutch wear. And then to get the piston out, you basically just put your thumbs on each side, your fingers, and just kinda of work it up. It'll come right out. And then remove that outer seal, throw it away. Set the piston off to the side. Now we have an inner seal here that we need to remove as well. Uh, a lot of times you can grab this with your finger. Sometimes you got to put a pick in there, push it around a little bit. Try not to stab yourself with the pick. And then whoop, pull it up out of there. And throw that you know where. So now we've got the direct drum completely tore down, ready to be cleaned. Uh, the only thing else that could be done is if you want to replace this bushing. Uh, in my opinion, if this bushing looks as nice as this one does, do not replace it. Uh, I have seen guys replace bushings like this before and end up causing more harm than good. The orientation of the bushing is important. Uh, it's not even like this from the factory, but you can see how this one, the oiling groove, goes to the notches here. That is technically how it is supposed to be, even though that it is uh, not even commonly like that from the factory. So because this is a really good bushing, there's nothing wrong with it, I'm not going to mess with it. So now the last thing we need to do is we need to tear down our overdrive section. This is also gonna have to go into the press, but before I do that, I like to take this bearing off so that way I don't have to worry about tearing it up in the press. There's a snap ring here that holds this bearing on. So you just take your snap ring pliers and pop that baby off. And then after you do that, you'll see that the bearing just comes right off and you can set all this stuff off to the side. Like always, make sure you save all your snap rings. Uh, pretty much all your snap rings are gonna be reused unless I say not to. And then what holds this output shaft in here is a snap ring again, but you do not wanna try to take this snap ring out while this is still pressed together. There is an 800 pound spring in here, and if you do somehow manage to get this off, when you get it out, 800 pounds of pressure is gonna go shooting this stuff out of here. So don't get killed working on this. Stop here, flip it over. It's time to go to the press. All right, so once again, I have a fancy dancy homemade tool. We have a three and a half inch piece of exhaust piping that I've done the same thing. Just cut a nice square window in. Uh, I've used this thing for lots of different things in just 47, 48, so that's why it looks the way it does. But uh, yours would just look like the other one, but it'll be three and a half inch. Now, the one thing about this is if you're making this yourself, you want to make sure that you cut the top as close to square as you can and then have the bottom as squared up as you can because when you press 
this overdrive section apart, we're actually pressing uh, a planetary spline apart. And if this isn't going in and out nice and square, it'll actually tear it up. So uh, this is, you know, one of those tools that you could still easily make yourself. Just be leery and make sure that it's as square of cuts as possible. So same deal as before. We're going to stick our plates up here. And now we're going to press it down. On this one, we're just pressing it down enough to access two things. So that's pretty much plenty there. Right now we're pushing down on that 800 pound spring. So there's a decent amount of pressure on this. So we're killing two birds with one stone here. We're going to remove the overdrive direct clutch pack snap ring. And as you'll see, a lot of times these are broken. Because of that, you really need to replace these every time you pull it apart. It is very important to do that. So that one can go in the garbage. And then there is a inner snap ring in here that you're going to want to remove as well. Now sometimes we have to, we can't do this at one shot because the location of where this snap ring groove is as far as um, where you can get your pick in to start it is different than this. So on this one we've got to release the pressure and now if we were going to leave the interplanetary section together, uh, we could just pull these out. But because we want to take that apart so that way we can clean everything properly, we need to press that out. Okay, so we can get to the end of this snap ring here. So we're going to pop this snap ring up out of here. And we're trying not to tear these up because they're pretty easy to get this formed and you want to make sure that you can keep them nice and round like that. So I'm going to set this aside because this is important we don't lose it. Now I'm going to release the jack. And hopefully I can get my plates out. Yeah, it's okay. Alright, so now you can see that we have pressed everything apart. So let's take all this over to the bench and talk about it. So now this is our 800 pound spring that we were discussing. There is a measurement for this to make sure that it is not collapsing. Uh, this is a pretty important thing to check because I have ran into this problem in the past and the, uh, what we're looking for here is four inches. Now, you know, give or take a hundred thousandths. It's not extremely, you know, crucial, but it needs to be right around 4.00. This one is 3.94, so plenty of good in spec. Uh, if you measure one of these things and it's like 3.8 something, 3.7 something, then this spring is actually starting to collapse and that is going to create issues for your overdrive direct clutch pack. So this one is good, we know it's good. We can set it off to the side. Now we have the overdrive sun gear here and this is something that we need to look at as well. A lot of times, where this bearing rides in here because this is getting the force of that 800 pound spring it will actually start to eat the bearing into this plate here so you want to make sure that it's not doing that there is a tolerance on that but there's no way for me to tell you what's acceptable and what's not without me physically being there to see it so all i can say is that if this is starting to get eaten up here pretty bad uh, to where you know it can cut you uh, if you run your finger across it then you need to replace this and your kit is going to come with this uh, bearing piece and the bearing so uh, you should be good in that department but uh, another thing you want to look out for is the sun gear. You want to make sure that uh, it's not sharp on the edges. A lot of times these sun gears, as they age, uh, they can create too much backlash and they can, uh, basically like a ring gear on a, on a rear end, like a ring and pinion, if it's really sharp then and it's got a really weird wear pattern, then you know you probably need to replace it. Uh, this one's in really good shape. And judging by that bushing, I can tell that somebody has recently replaced this when they replaced this uh, bearing retainer and the bearing. So this is all good to go back together. So now from there, you've got your overdrive planetary gear and you just pull 
that gear out of there like so. And I always, on any of this gear stuff, I'll inspect it a lot closer when I actually get it back from cleaning it uh, before I'm assembling it. But it is a good idea uh, to go through and just run the rollers, make sure you don't see anything that jumps out at you, uh, especially if you're, you know, on a time crunch to where it's like, hey, if I have a, a part that I need to order, I need to order it as soon as I tear it down, then it's good to do this stuff before you clean it. I just like to do it after I clean it, so that way I get the full picture of how it actually looks. And then the next thing you're going to need to do is pull the overdrive sprag out of this. And pretty straightforward there. Sprag just pulls out. And then once again, uh, I'm sorry, the Sprag race there. The Sprag here is just like the low reverse Sprag where you've got to be very careful with it or you'll send rollers and springs flying everywhere. Uh, this is something that if as long as it was installed correctly, these never, ever, ever break. Um, so this isn't something to worry about. Just, you know, give it a good once over, make sure she looks good and set it off to the side. And then under that, you'll find a bearing there as well. And that goes with the race. And so now we are ready to take the output shaft out of this. So to take the output shaft out, back to that snap ring I talked about. Uh, one easy thing you can do before you get started, just take your hammer and give it a little tap. That kind of settles the output shaft down in there and makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to get your snap ring out. Some of these snap rings are harder than others. It just depends how many times they have or haven't been out. I'm a big pick fan as you can see because picks make your life so much easier when you're working on this little tedious transmission snap rings. And you can get a set of picks at Harbor Freight that'll you know, do you just fine. You don't have to spend a bunch of money. And then save the snap ring, set it out of the way. Sometimes you get lucky with these. Sometimes they pull right apart. Sometimes they don't. Yeah, we're not gonna get that lucky. Didn't think we were going to. <laughs> so, what you'll need to do is turn this thing upside down. Hold it off the side of the table here or something and push it out. Uh, usually the way I like to do it is I'll take a big half inch drive uh, extension and I'll push down on it basically with the hammer and I'll just tap it around until it falls out. Now technically if you're not changing the output shaft uh, you can skip this step. You don't have to go through with it. But the reason that I like to take it apart and clean it is because a lot of times this output shaft will get uh, almost like anti-seize material built up around here. And uh, I think a lot of times it's from the Overdrive Direct clutch pack. And it's uh, something that I like to clean. But technically, if you're not changing the output shaft, you can skip that step. So now we have everything fully 100% disassembled. Now we can talk about uh, taking it to the washer and washing it. Now I'm well aware that a lot of you guys or most of you guys aren't going to have a parts washer or a transmission parts washer. Uh, I know some of you guys might have access to one with where you work or if you're a shop that's doing these builds. Um, then all of this stuff can pretty much just go in the parts washer and when you pull it out I like to just dry it off as soon as it comes out. Any sort of water based parts washer uh, it will flash rust metal parts if you don't dry them off when they come out. But if you are the true DIY guy that's doing this in the garage at your house you're not going to probably have a parts washer and that's okay. You don't need one. Uh, something that works extremely well is gasoline. Um, I like a higher octane gasoline. It seems to clean a little bit better, but if you take like 92 or 93 octane gas, you can clean this stuff really, really well. Like just as good as a parts washer well. Now, of course, when you do that, make sure you're doing it outside or somewhere where you're well ventilated, um, you know, so you don't have any problems from the fumes, uh, but you can clean any of these internal parts with gas. Uh, aviation gas works really well as well. 
And then on the case, if you don't have a washer, you can actually use a pressure washer. Uh, depending on how bad your case is, it may or may not need pressure washed. As you can see by the first video that we did, this case was really gross. Um, so if I didn't have a parts washer, I would have to pressure wash that case, but they're not always that bad. And then uh, the other thing you can always do is just get a case of brake clean and you can brake clean all this stuff. And once again, if you are going to brake clean all this stuff, make sure you do it in a well ventilated area so you don't pass out and somebody finds you three days later. So that's pretty much what this video is going to entail on this part two. We've got everything taken apart now. I'm going to get everything in the washer. I'm going to get it all clean, get it all dried. There's really no reason to videotape that uh, because when we put all these pieces back together, I will show you step-by-step -step examination of what to look for as you're going back together. Uh, really for me, when I'm examining these transmission parts, it's a three-step process. I'm looking at the parts as I'm tearing the transmission down. I'm looking at the parts again as I'm tearing the internals down and then I'm inspecting the parts one last time after I clean it as it's going back together. So the next video we will be working on putting this back together.